Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial, uh, we're going to discuss the beginning of chapter 20, namely sections 1 and 2 in chapter 20. Um, the first section is just basically a refresher about oxidation and reduction, which we did cover briefly in chapter 4. And it covers going over oxidation states and how to determine whether or not there are substances that are being oxidized or reduced in a chemical reaction. But then the second section goes on to discuss how it is that we actually write balanced equations for redox processes. And the tricky thing about redox equations is that they simply cannot always be balanced by inspection. Basically when we balance chemical equations or we have balanced chemical equations to this point, basically we've just taken a look at the equation and then using coefficients balance the number of atoms on either charge. Uh, I'm sorry, on either side. But basically, when we're talking about redox equations, basically there's also charge to consider, whether the charges are balanced. And when you have two processes going on where you're transferring electrons back and forth, that becomes a bit more complicated and a bit more involved. And so I'm going to demonstrate that process for you now where we balance redox equations for those redox processes that occur in acidic solution and then also in basic solution. So let's take a look at this equation on the slide currently. Basically we're being asked to balance this equation uh, for a reaction that takes place in acid solution. And so the first step always is to assign the oxidation numbers so that you can see what the oxidation process is and what the reduction process is. So thinking back to our oxidation number rules, this oxidation state for manganese on the left, since it's manganese 2 plus cation, would be plus 2. For oxygen in the second ion, the oxidation number is minus 2 times 3. That would be negative 6. But notice that there is a negative 1 charge. And so that means that bismuth must have an oxidation number of plus 5, because negative 6 plus 5 would give me negative 1 as an overall charge. Then over here in the permanganate ion, basically what I've got is oxygen in a negative 2 oxidation state. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And then I have a minus 1 charge here as well. So that means manganese must have been plus 7. And then bismuth cation is in the plus 3 oxidation state since the charge on the bismuth cation in this equation is 3 plus. So we're going to look to see if there are any oxidation numbers that are changing, and indeed there are. Basically the manganese is going from plus 2 to plus 7. So basically if it's getting more positive, that means that you're losing electrons. And so basically if you remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. And basically you can see if I'm going from plus 2 to plus 7, I must be losing 5 electrons. Now if we take a look at the bismuth, Basically, the bismuth is also changing oxidation state. It's going from plus 5 to plus 3. And so, again, since we're getting less positive, we must be gaining electrons, and so that must be a reduction process. And basically, I have a gain of 2 electrons. So what I'm going to do to balance this equation overall is I'm going to write out the half reactions. I'm going to write one smaller equation that represents the oxidation process and another smaller equation that represents the reduction process. And then after balancing each of those, I'm going to add both processes together to get the overall redox reaction equation. So let's start with the oxidation half reaction. Okay, so it's manganese 2 plus and that's going to give the permanganate ion. Okay. Now the first thing you do is balance everything by mass. So if you notice there's one manganese on either side, that is fine. But I need to have four oxygens on both sides. And the way I do that, if I need to add oxygen to either side of the reaction equation, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water molecules. I'm going to add, in this case, four water molecules. So this way, four oxygens will be present, okay? But now I've introduced hydrogen. And so if you notice, I have four times two, that's eight hydrogens on the left. 
And so I'm going to add eight hydrogen cations or eight protons on the right to balance out. So I have eight hydrogens on either side. Now that I've done that, everything is balanced by mass. But now I have to also balance this by charge. And so what I'm going to do is count up the charge on both sides of the equation. So far, I have water, which is neutral on the left, and then manganese, which is the 2 plus cation on the right. So overall, the charge on the reactant side right now in the equation is 2 plus. On the product side, I have positive 8 minus 1. That's positive 7. That's my charge on the product side. And I need to actually have the same charge on both sides. It doesn't necessarily have to be zero on both sides, but basically I need both charges to be equal. And so the way that I do that, I can't add protons. I can't add positive charge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add electrons to balance my charges at the end. And I'm going to need five electrons on this side. So that positive seven minus five electrons, that's going to be a charge of positive two. So now the charge is balanced on either side. And so that's the balanced half reaction for the oxidation process. Now let's do the same for the reduction process. So basically I'm going to take the BiO3 minus, and that's going to give bismuth cation. Now again, notice the number of bismuths on either side are fine, but now I need three oxygens. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add three water molecules to the right-hand side to get the three oxygens. But notice that now I need six hydrogens on either side. So I'm going to add six protons over here to the left-hand side. Now everything is balanced by mass, so what I need to do then is I need to go and balance by charge. Now so far this is plus six minus one, this is five plus on the reactant side, and this is 3 plus on the product side. So in order to balance this out, I'm going to add electrons to the more positive side until both charges are equal. So if I add two electrons on this side, then that will bring me to a charge of plus 3 on both sides, and now this half reaction is balanced as well. But notice that the goal is to add these reactions together, and I can't really do that yet because the number of electrons is not the same. So what I'm going to try to do is multiply by integers for each or both of the half reaction equations until I actually have the same number of electrons in both. So I'm going to look for the least common multiple between 5 and 2. Now basically the least common multiple would be 10. So I'm going to shoot for getting 10 electrons in each reaction equation. So that means I'm going to have to multiply the first half reaction by 2 and the second half reaction by 5. And so when I do that, basically I'm going to get 8 moles of water on top plus 2 moles of manganese 2 plus. And that's going to give me 2 moles of permanganate ion plus 16 moles of protons, plus 10 electrons. For the second half reaction, that's going to be 30 moles of protons, plus 5 moles of the BiO3 minus, plus 10 electrons, giving me 5 moles of the bismuth 3 cation, plus 15 moles of water. Now what I'm going to do is look to simplify. I'm going to cancel whatever can cancel, and reduce on either side of the equation so that when I add, basically I have the finalized equation. Now, the 10 electrons should cancel. Notice I have 8 moles of water on this side, but 15 on that side. So these 8 will cancel with 8 of these to leave me with 7 moles of water on the right-hand side. On the left side here, I have 30 moles of the protons, but 16 moles of protons on the right-hand side in the first half reaction. These 16 will cancel with 16 here to give me 14 moles of the protons. Now, if I just add both of the equations in blue vertically, that will give me the overall redox reaction. So that would be 14 
moles of protons plus 2 moles of manganese cation plus 5 moles of the BiO3 minus. That's going to give me 2 moles of the permanganate ion plus 5 moles of the bismuth cation plus 7 moles of water. So if I go ahead and check, basically I have 14 hydrogens, 14 hydrogens, 2 manganese, 2 manganese, 5 bismuth, 5 bismuth. The oxygens would be 5 times 3, that's 15. Here I have 2 times 4 is 8, plus another 7, that's 15. So I'm balanced by mass. In terms of charge, basically I've got 14 plus 4 is 18, minus 5 is 13. Here I have 5 times 3 is 15, minus 2 is 13. So basically it's balanced by charge as well, and this is my final balanced oxidation reduction process for this particular reaction equation. Now, what about if I'm doing the same operation in basic solution? Well, the process is very similar with one slight change at the end. So we're going to go ahead and begin like we did the last one. So basically, I'll leave it to you to verify, but the oxidation numbers for this particular equation should be negative 2 for oxygen, plus 7 for manganese. Negative 2 for oxygen here, plus 3 for carbon there. Uh, negative 2 for oxygen here, but then plus 4 for manganese there, and then negative 2 for oxygen and carbon dioxide, but plus 4 for carbon. Now, if we go ahead and compare, manganese is going from plus 7 to plus 4, and so that is a reduction process involving three electrons. And if I take a look at the carbon, the carbon is actually being oxidized in a process that involves one electron. So if I break this out into half reactions, so I'm going to take the permanganate ion, and that's going to give me manganese 4 oxide. Now, again, what I want to do is balance it by mass first. And so the manganese, there's one on either side. I have four oxygens on this side, but only two on that side. So I need to add two water molecules on this side to even out the number of oxygens. But then I need to even out the number of hydrogens, so that would be an addition of four protons to the left-hand side to balance that out. If I take a look at the charges on either side, basically here I have plus four minus one, that's plus three in charge on the left-hand side, but we're neutral on the right-hand side. And so to get this to balance out, then basically I'm going to need three electrons on the left-hand side so that the charge would then be zero, and I have a zero charge on both sides. So that's the balanced half reaction for the reduction process. For the oxidation process, basically that would be the oxalate ion going to carbon dioxide. And so if you notice, the first thing we have to do is actually balance by mass because there are two carbons and four oxygens on the left, but only one oxygen, I'm sorry, one carbon and two oxygens on the right. So I'm going to need to multiply by a coefficient of two on the right hand side. And so now we're balanced by mass, but now what I've got to do is I've got to balance out by charge. And right now my charge on the left hand side is negative two in this half reaction, but I'm neutral on the right hand side. So that means I have to add two electrons to the right hand side so that my charges are the same on either side of this equation. Now, each of these half reactions is now balanced, but now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and balance out the number of electrons between both processes. And so, again, I'm going to shoot for the least common multiple between these two electrons and these three electrons. And so that would mean I'm looking to get to six electrons as the least common multiple between two and three. So I'm going to multiply the second half reaction by three and the first one by two. So if I go ahead and do that, then basically what I get is for the top half reaction, eight, 
H plus plus two of the permanganate ion plus six electrons. Two moles of the manganese four oxide plus four moles of water. Now for the second half reaction, I'm going to get three moles of the oxalate. And then, continuing to distribute through, I get six moles of carbon dioxide plus six electrons. And so now I'm going to look to cancel whatever I can cancel and then simplify. The six electrons would cancel on either side. Okay, and at this point, I don't really believe I have any other cancellations that I can do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just add both reaction, half reactions together. So basically it should be eight moles of protons plus two moles of the permanganate plus three moles of the oxalate ion. On the right hand side, I have six moles of carbon dioxide plus two moles of the manganese four oxide plus four moles of water. So if I check, basically I have eight hydrogens on either side, two manganese on either side, six carbons on either side, and then the oxygens would be two times four is eight plus three times four is 12. So 12 plus eight, that would be 20. Over here, I have six times two, that would be 12 plus four, that would be 16 plus another four would be 20. And so I'm balanced, but I can't leave it like this because remember that I did this reaction in basic conditions. And so that means wherever I have an H plus, I'm going to add an equivalent amount of OH minus. And whatever I do on one side of the equation, I have to do on the other. But Hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions together give me water. So this is the equivalent of eight moles of water. So I can simplify again. Basically, these four moles of water will cancel with four moles of water on the left-hand side to give me four moles of water on the left-hand side. So if I go ahead and rewrite this equation, it's four moles of water plus two moles of the permanganate plus three moles of the oxalate gives me six moles of carbon dioxide plus two moles of the manganese four oxide plus eight moles of the hydroxide ion. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna try and check everything. So that's eight hydrogens on either side, two manganese, six carbon. Now the oxygens are four plus eight is 12, plus another 12, that would be 24. Six times two is 12. 12 plus four would be 16, plus another eight is 24 oxygen. So I'm balanced by mass. Now in terms of charge, basically I have negative two here, plus negative six there, that's negative eight total on the left-hand side. And if I take a look on the right-hand side, I only have charge on the hydroxide ion, there are eight of them. So it's negative eight on the right-hand side, so this is balanced by charge as well. So this would be my final redox reaction equation balanced under basic conditions. So this is a really long process, so it's gonna take some practice. Go ahead and work on the follow-up assignment. We're also going to do an application activity tomorrow and further reinforcement the next day to make sure you guys understand how to do these and then move on from there. If there are any questions, by all means, let me know, either via email or bring up your questions in class. Have a good night.